Hello, welcome to ADS Python Tutorials. This is tutorial 4 in which we will talk about how to work with variables and measurement equation from Python console. Both of these topics are very important to understand, especially if you are looking to little more complex Python automation. So here's the agenda for this session. It's going to be a very interesting session and you have a lot of useful information. So I hope you will stay till the end. Try to grab every concept so that you can go back and repeat at your side. So here, two main topics, as we mentioned, is how to create this variable, how to define measurement equations through Python. And when you have these measurement equation, your data processing gets a little more involved, not too complex, but a little more involved. So I'll talk about all these concepts, how to do data mining and so forth. So a lot of interesting content, so stay tuned. And as always, keep exploring more videos in this playlist to keep uh, deepening your understanding. All right, so let's get started and switch over to ADS. So, so far, if you have been watching tutorial in this playlist, I'm assuming you already are pretty comfortable creating workspace, library, schematic design, placing components. And as covered in the last video, we also went through performing data simulation, uh, or rather circuit simulation, data processing, and result plotting. So let me go ahead and start by creating a workspace and a schematic design, which will serve as a base to our on this tutorial. So let's go ahead and create the workspace and the design. So here um, we have the design. There's no difference than what we you know did in the past videos. But there's one subtle difference here. If I zoom in, you can see in these components, I have declared a variable names. I have not directly declared the values as this is this is pretty useful, especially if you're trying to do any parametric sweep or optimization and so on. The concept of variable is wonderful to be used in a more complex design. So from the last videos, and this video, the difference is these inductance and capacitance value. Instead of being a fixed number, I have declared them as a variable inside this for loop with a logic so that it is named as L1, L2, L3, and so on. And for capacitor, it is C1, C2, C3, and so on. Right? That's the only subtle difference. Now, since we have this schematic design, now we also need to place a var block and add these variables so that you can proceed with your circuit simulation. So how do we do that? It's pretty simple actually. So to start with, I will create a list or an array containing these L and C values. As you can see, I have five inductors and four capacitors. Now this is, again, we are moving towards talking about more practical design which I will likely cover in the next video, which is to do filter synthesis using the classical theoretical equations. And once you have those inductors and capacitor values, typically which will be list, how do you create and drive ADS for that customer synthesis, custom synthesis program, right? So pay attention because some of these will be very useful for a real practical application I'm going to show in the next tutorial. All right, so now I have inductor and capacitor values. I can place the variable instance block and then add those variables in that block. So let me first copy paste it here and then explain. First, I'm going to add the instance on my design. And again, it is going to follow library, cell and view concept. This is no different than placing an inductor or a capacitor or a transistor, right? It's the same. And then since I need to, um, you know, modify the variable members, I'm creating a pointer and then using a for loop, I'm in this pointer, I'm creating more variables. And the command to do is very simple, is the variable pointer dot vars, which is to add a new variables in the list. And then you simply de declare the variable name and then the variable value. So I'm, I'm using the same concept here like you would do for any, um, you know, uh, component value or component, you know, kind of creation. 
And then if you remember in ADS, whenever we place a var block, like in this case, if I place a var block on the schematic, you will always have a default member there called x. But when I'm adding all the comp, you know, values, I don't want that x to be there. So I'm simply deleting that x variable. This also tells you in case you later, if you decide to delete any variable from the var block, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. Use delete command, give the pointer uh, to that variable dot vars, define which variable name you want to delete and it will be deleted. So let's go ahead, let me delete these variable and let's execute these two segments as I'm creating two separate var blocks with var1 and var2 name as you can see in this statement. One var block has all the inductance value, another var block has capacitance value. Right? Pretty straightforward. So now you have the var block. If you want, you can go ahead and proceed with the simulation either through the Python console or you can run it using the regular uh, GUI you know, icon and command. Now before we proceed for simulation, let's also talk about how do we handle measurement equation. So here, first of all, I created a list and this is again just one way of doing it. There are many ways of how you can create measurement equation, but I'm going to show you the most simple way and very straightforward way to create multiple measurement equation in the measurement expression block. So here I defined a list or an array that has all the measurement expressions that I would like to add. You can see there is a single code. So this is one expression, comma, this is the second expression and that's the third expression. So this way you can have a list of containing all the measurement equations which you want. So this is the first thing I do, right? Go ahead and define all the you know expressions you need. And then simply create a function or if you don't want, you don't create a function, you can directly create a flat code. But here I'm defining a function called add measurement equation, passing three, you know, uh, attributes or three parameters. One is the design, meaning the schematic context, equation name, what is what is I'm going to call that measurement expression block, and then equation list. And as you can see, I already have defined all the equations I want to add. Again, the measurement equation block will be placed by add instance command and is going to use library cell view, which is again not different now this i might be sounding very repetitive when i say that but i just want to re-emphasize there's no difference how you place this war block or inductor capacitor transistor measurement expression they all follow library cell view concept because everything is open access library all right so once you place measurement expression block the first thing i do again measurement equation is the pointer to that block which we will place on the schematic. And then how do you change parameter? Well, here is the trick. The first parameter will always be set like how you would set any, let's say inductance value or capacitance value if you have followed uh, the previous video. But let me show you one more thing, which is kind of unique to few components. One of them is measurement equation. So when you place this component here, like in, through the regular GUI command, you can notice you have you can add multiple measurement equations. Now in this measurement equation, you see the measurement field is called repeated with a square bracket. That means it's kind of array or or you can have multiple of these strings which you can add, right? So this is your measurement equation name, and then you have the expression which you want to type, and you simply click add for example if i say measurement 2 you know enter any value let's say 1 2 2 and you click add in this way you can keep adding your expressions here and it's a repeated term right so when you have such spatial components here is the simple logic we do first field it is always going to be straightforward entry like you would do for any you know component so in this case, equation list first element, which is zeroth index, which is group delay, gets added as it is. Then for the remaining expressions in the list, 
I am simply using a function. You see, measurement equation is the pointer. Parameter is again same measurements. And then I use repeats dot append. So it will keep on appending the repeatable field. And then I'm simply defining uh, the expression which I want. So let me go ahead and add it and then you see how it behaves. So when I execute it, you can see now it has added three expression. And these are the three which I have in this equation list. So pretty straightforward at the beginning. You might just need to learn a little bit of syntax, but once you do it and once you create this function, now this function without looking at it, it can be used in any part of your code. You just need to modify this list containing all the expressions which you need to have in your schematic design. So hopefully this is clear. All right. So now once I have the variable, I have my schematic, I have my controller, I have the related measurement expressions that I want to perform. And again, here I'm just using some very simple measurement expression just to illustrate the concept of how to create this block. And once you have it, how you do data processing, which we will uh, talk about next. Now, at this point on, we already talked about how do we run simulation? How do you create a net list? How do you launch ADS circuit simulator using EDA toolbox in the last video? So let me go ahead and do it again here. So as you can see, I'm creating a net list, invoking the simulator, defining where my data should go, which is inside the workspace in the data folder. And I'm running that net list. And once net list is run, I have the data set created and I'm opening the data set using data set dot open function. Data set is the module which we have imported from the ADS dot data set, you know, uh, module which is available. And then once I have this whole data set, I'm simply plotting all the var block names so that I know what all data blocks I have available. So after I execute, you can see there are four var blocks available. In the previous video, our job was very simple because we only had a parameter controller. So there was only one data block, which was sp1.sp. So we knew that all our data belongs inside the data block. But now you have three more and here, now you need to figure out where is your measurement expression. Let's say if you want to plot group delay, where is your group delay in these data blocks? So before we go there, let's understand what is this ALE underscore zero, ALE underscore one dot SP1 and so on and so forth. So ALE simply stands for AEL expression. AEL is the programming language in which a lot of ADS functions are written and it's very well documented in ADS, um, you know, um, installed directory or a knowledge center. So AEL012 simply means you have three expressions, or three measurement equation on your schematic. That's what these indexes are sin signifying. Dot sp1 means these expressions are generated because of this sp1 simulation which you have performed, right? So that's how this nomenclature goes. Now, the point is, where is my data, right? So to do that is pretty simple. What Once you know the var block name and the data is available in this output data variable, I can go ahead and scan through all these data blocks and find whatever measurement I'm looking for. Again, this is one way of doing it using the data set, um, you know, module. If you need more advanced, you know, data processing, I would recommend you to go through documentation of Pathwave data tools, which also is available once you install ADS. That is much, much more powerful and higher capability. But we are taking smaller baby steps before we go and talk about more advanced step um, in, in you know upcoming videos. All right. So for data blocks in output data, that is your data set, we are going to use a function called find var blocks with var name. And I'm looking for an expression with the name group delay. As you can see, this is the first measurement expression I have written. Now I need to find out where is that group delay lo located among this data block. And once I find it, I print a data block name and I 
you know, transfer that data block into a new variable called GD. So let's go ahead and run it. And now it says group delay expression is found in AL0.SP1. So in this case, it's pretty simple because you only have three expressions. So this will be computed first. This will be second. This will be third. So actually, you can figure out AL0 will have group delay. ALE1 will have S21 mag and AL2 will have S21 phase. But in more complex design, you may have 10, 20 equations. So it's not always easy to keep track by just looking at the number and sometimes it can even get mixed. So using this function gives you peace of mind that you can simply run, figure out where is the data and now you can proceed for post-processing and your data plotting. Now similarly, like in last video, we already knew where is our S21 block is. But just in case you have multiple S parameter controller, for example, and you are doing you know, maybe different frequency range or something. So sometimes it's also essential to find where is your rest parameter block. So this is why I have provided also this code. So here we are going to use find var block uh, with var name and I'm going to find S21. Notice the subtle difference. I'm not writing small bracket 2 comma 1. I'm using square bracket 2 comma 1, right? So once we do that, it will return where is your S21 measurement and that's this block. Although we knew this, but I just wanted to show you how to find if you're looking for any specific S parameter or Y parameter and so on and so forth. All right, so once we know our data block, remaining job is pretty simple. I can go ahead and convert these data blocks to Pandas data frame as we discussed in the last video. So now I have two Pandas data frame. One is my data that is containing my S parameter and I have my GD which is containing my group delay. So now remaining job is pretty simple. I will go ahead and extract the needed data from those data blocks and I will play, you know, plot them. Like in this case, I'm plotting S21 and S11 with respect to frequency, which is, you know, what we did last time as well. Now, once I already extracted the group delay, I know where is my group delay. I can perform the same thing with group delay and the related data block is in my GD. So I'm extracting frequency and group delay, normalizing it to megahertz and nanosecond. And then I'm going to plot frequency versus group delay for my filter. And this is the resulting plot. Y axis is the group delay in nanosecond x-axis is frequency in megahertz. So pretty, pretty straightforward as you can see with a little bit of application, little bit of understanding, things take a logical flow and it's pretty easy to decode how information is flowing, how to set up the, the particular component in the schematic and a lot of this is you will find either covered in documentation or you can always, you have this video now, you can refer to this tutorial video. If it's still there are some things which are unanswered, you can reach out to your nearest Keysight technical support to get assistance. So that's all for this video. I hope the content presented will be useful for your work. The script which I have used is shared on my blog page. Look at the link provided in the description box of this video. Download the script. Give it a try at your own. So in the end, thanks for your time and attention. Wish you all the best with your Python automation and keep using ADS and keep enhancing your knowledge. Thanks a lot and look forward to see you in the next video.